Thank you. Fill a seat over there. Yeah, you could if you want. Yeah, that way. Yeah, that Michael Reese could set up right near there. That's perfect. Oh, then you won't be in the video, though. You're making a joyful noise. You're an enigma. What's that sound? We started doing this. Rex will set up a special Todd cam. <laughs> the Todd right cam. Yeah. I can maybe down like this. You can have like, the GoPro on your uh, mandolin, so like, so, like facing your yes, string. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I'm gonna try for now. I've always wanted to do that. That'd be really cool. Um, now there's there's some Molly Pedal instructional videos where they've got an iPhone mounted to her fretboard. I think I might have seen this. And you can. She has like that like red thing. Maybe it's mounted up this way so you can see this action. Yeah. Or no, 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 no. Maybe it's mounted this way so you can see her right hand. Because that's what's incredible. Yeah. I mean. Her uh, finger picking her up. Whatever you call that. Black picking, man. Black picking style. Like well, she does this other thing, too. There's a one song. Um, and she, it's, um, bang, bang, bang. And she does what she calls claw hammer guitar. And it's just like Clawhammer banjo. Mm -hmm. And it is incredible. It is incredible. Have you I seen that video of um, her and uh, Billy Strings? Um, I guess they're kind of like guitar dueling, you know, on a Fender. Yeah. Know, I've seen a, a few of their videos. There's one, this bluegrass song they do together. They did it at a festival called um, Little Maggie. Yeah. I don't know. That that might be it. What you call it? Under band. And these were just like some studio performance. Oh, that's it was right. just like to promote a guitar. September. Mm. New record. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, yeah, I saw it. There was a, I think I saw it recently, so it was new. Yeah, Billy Joel. Pretty good. Hmm? Really good voice. I know. Brutal. I had to spare him. I spared him. For the third time, I have to speak. Welcome to Covenant Presbyterian Church. We're so glad you're here with us today. Um, and we're so glad you're worshiping online with us as well. Um, it's a beautiful day outside today. It may be a little warm, but it's a great August day. So I hope you guys can all enjoy that today. Um, just want to give you a few uh, uh, words of welcome and announcements. Um, I am uh, Josh Fowler, the youth, youth director here at Covenant. Um, and I'm going to pass it off in a little bit to Karen Sackett, who will be preaching for us today um, while the pastors are on vacation. And speaking of that, um, if anyone has any questions about uh, or needs a pastoral um, help while this week is going on, um, this week the, pa the elders that are on call are, uh, it's just Jen Waits. And then next week, the last week that the pastors are on vacation uh, is Tom Andress. Um, so if you have any questions, 
in your bulletin or online in your email that you've received, it has their name and their number there if you need to contact someone for pastoral um, help while the pastors are away. Uh, lastly, the other thing we have is the national mission trip. Uh, they're still hoping to get more people to go on that. It's an amazing experience. So if you have any questions or any uh, thoughts or just maybe an inkling of going, um, please contact Pastor Knox or Peter Decker about going or even Tom Andrus. Uh, and then uh, lastly, um, with the new Delta variant um, and the cases starting to rise again, uh, Session has decided to uh, maybe like just step up our, our, um, our role a little bit uh, in taking care of this, uh, this new variant. Um, so we're just going to enc encourage people to wear masks while worshiping uh, inside, uh, but it's not required. Uh, we're also encouraging people to maybe just social distance a little bit. And um, lastly, um, when we sing, uh, we encourage just everyone to, in the congregation just to maybe uh, sing along in their heads or in their hearts um, and just listen to the music uh, here. Um, so that way we're not uh, spreading the virus um, any more than we have to. Uh, but we, we still want to worship inside, and so we're still able to do that, which is wonderful. Um, we just want to be as safe as possible um, with all that's going on. Uh, thank you very much. And then um, I guess we'll start with greeting. Uh, the Lord be with you. Please stand for our call to worship. Oh God, you are my God. Seriously. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Thus I have seen you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory because your loving kindness is better than life. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and praise your name, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. All right. Let's remain standing for our uh, first song, Act Justly, Love Mercy, Walk Humbly.
such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You were still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out Right now, I know you're able My God will come through again You can do all things You can do all things but fail Cause you never lost a battle No, you never lost a battle And I know, I know Join me in the prayer of confession. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. When I have done what is wrong and displeasing in your sight, O Lord, extend your love to correct me. When I ignore those in need and pretend that all is right with the world, O Lord, help me face the truth. When I turn a blind eye to those who have been stricken with poverty and are facing the injustices that come along with it, O oh Lord, teach me your way. Enable me to extend your love and give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O oh Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Amen. God will create in us a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within us. He will not cast us away from his presence nor take his Holy Spirit from us, but he will restore us to the joy of our salvation 
and sustain us with a willing spirit. All right, uh, enjoy our special music. Thank you very much. 
If you bow your heads in prayer, please. Lord, we come together before you and pray that your hand just be upon each and every one of us, no matter where we are in our lives, that we will feel your presence and your direction in everything that we do. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture is um, today is Philippians 4, 10 through 23. It's the end of the book of Philippians. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, and now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but lacked the opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my affliction. You yourselves also know, Philippians, that, that at the first preaching of the gospel, after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, but you alone. For even in Thessalonica you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. But I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God and my God will supply all your needs in accordance to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with your spirit. In the book of Philippians, we find Paul in prison. He is confined to the rooms he has rented. He depends on others to supply his needs as he was under guard and he could not leave. Paul's isolation in prison brings home to me the pandemic of last year, which seems to be continuing, and the isolation that we've endured. Last November, my sister and brothers and I were informed that our mom was in a state of decline. Because of the pandemic, we weren't allowed to see her. My sister is a retired social worker, and through her persuasion, she was able to to, uh, get the um, assisted living home to allow us in. My mom's apartment had an outside entrance so that we did not have to go into the common areas of the building, and we were allowed to see her. Um, She was suffering from dementia, which went into Alzheimer's, so that when the staff member let us in through the glass lighting door, she introduced us to our mom. She said, Donna, here are your children. And she looked at us and she said, all these people are mine. And we said, yes, we were. And she looked out the glass lighting door and she said, well, are there any more? (laughs) So I said, well, unless you've gotten busy, no, we're it. So uh, we were able to see her for four days in a row. It was a great visit. She could not believe how old we all were. She couldn't believe we had gray hair. She thought that was hilarious and she laughed. And she had uh, maybe a 60 second retention rate. She would look at one of us and say, well, tell me about your life and we'd tell her, and then she'd go to the next child and ask the same question, and then after she'd run through all four of us, she'd start again. And um, she kept asking us how old we were. So we would tell her how old we were, and she'd look at us and she'd say, I don't know, I'm not that old. There's just no way you can be that old. It was a phenomenal visit. We just had a great time. She also told us that she was seeing our dad, who had been dead for five years. I was really tempted to ask her how he looked, but I didn't do that. Um, She, even at the end of four days, I don't know if she really knew who we were, 
but it was a great visit. And after we left, about two weeks later, she passed away. So we came back in December to clean out her apartment, to bury her. And for us, my sister's in Arizona, I'm in Virginia, and my brothers are still in Spokane, Washington. So it was a time of reconciliation. We had not really been in touch with each other since my dad's death. And it was a time where there was healing and we got to visit with each other and really talk with each other. And before we left to go back to our homes, we set up a group text so that we're in daily contact with each other. And it's, it's been great, hilarious, but great. Um, I couldn't ask for anything more. Well, the letter to Philippians was the last letter Paul wrote. He had established this church 10 years before, and it was obviously dear to him. He uses the word joy and or rejoice 15 times in this letter. In none of his other letters is he bonded with the church like he did with the church in Philippi. He turns his imprisonment into a blessing. He sees that him being in prison has made the people of the church more bold and courageous in spreading the gospel in their communities. Um, he, uh, that is referenced in Philippians 1.14. In Philippians 2, 2 through 4, he exhorts this church to stand firm and united in mind and spirit, working together for the faith of the gospel. He encourages them to look out for each other and not just for themselves and for their own interests. I believe that as Paul wrote this letter, he himself was encouraged. I know that I find when I encourage someone, I walk away feeling encouraged myself. His reason for this ex exhortation of unity in mind and spirit is explained in Philippians 2, 10 through 11. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow every tongue will confess, those who are in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And this thought is followed by Philippians 2.13. God is always at work in you, making you willing and able to fulfill his own purpose. This is verse is an encouragement to all of us, that no matter where we're at, what we're doing, God is still at work in us. And Philippians 3.12 through 14, he reminds us that nothing in our lives compares with knowing Christ, not wealth, not poverty, not possessions, not property, not health, not illness. All of this fades when we approach Jesus. We yearn for his presence and closeness as we press on towards God through Christ. Finally, in Philippians 4, verse 4, he culminates his joy in saying, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. His continued words of encouragement to the Philippian church in, in turn encourages him and causes him to rejoice. It's not the actual gift put into Paul's hands that gave him the joy, but the giving of the gift and the meaning of the gift. In 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 5, he actually tells the Corinthian church of his joy of receiving gifts from the Philippian church. I'm not sure how they received that, but he reminds them anyway. The act of giving is a freeing experience. When we give of ourselves, not necessarily financially, but freely giving ourselves, it opens us up to new opportunities and an awareness of the joy of giving. This joy of giving was one of the first things I noticed when I returned to this church. There is a real desire in this body of Christ to give of ourselves not only within the church, but in our community. These acts of giving stretch across a broad spectrum, from Mexico to Missouri to North Carolina, from the Advent workshop to acts to rise against hunger, from the grief share ministry to providing old towels and blankets to animals. Our music is amazing. Also, from adult Bible studies to children's Sunday school to the youth group ministry. The making of meals, the baking of cookies and coffee. To those who work quietly setting up and taking down for the surface, 
service, keeping the facilities clean, and those who give themselves to our weekly filming and programming. As we open ourselves to giving freely, God continues to open doors to us for new opportunities. This is awesome. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me is one of my favorite verses. I'm quoting it all the time, especially when I'm over my head in a project. Uh, an example is when I had knee replacement surgery. It was way more complicated than I thought or imagined. I knew I had to have physical therapy, but for some reason I thought I would be all well in eight weeks. Um, in my defense, the literature provided by the surgeon explained the process of healing, but now how long it would take. And since the surgeon said he would see me two weeks after surgery, and then eight weeks after surgery, and then that was it, I figured I would be completely healed. Actually, it takes a year. My poor family. I was not the giving person in this situation. I was the one on the receiving end. I found out that Rich is amazing. He replaced ice packs and held my hand and escorted me to the bathroom, brought me cups of coffee, all while I was hurting and not a very pleasant person. He may have been stretched to the limits of his giving. No, he wasn't. Oh, good. Um, as I was relearning to walk and trying to get back to normal, I would often be muttering, I can do all things who strengthens, through him who strengthens me as I was trying to get up and down steps. My kids and grandkids also pitched in with helping household chores, cooking, and taking walks with grandma. They may, wanted to make sure I didn't fall down and that I made it back home. Because there are often times where I felt really good walking out of the house and I'd get so far and then realize I was done and I still had to get back home. So it was, it was wonderful. If I had not been incapacitated, they would have never known their gifts of giving and how wonderful it was. We even discovered that Rich is a great and creative cook. And it is a gift, and thankfully, he's still cooking. <laughs> Charles Spurgeon said, sees Philippians 4.19, which states, and my God will supply all your needs in accordance with his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. He saw this as a reflection of 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. In this story, Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha, responds to a widow of one of the prophets of God. She comes to him saying that she's going to be forced to sell her sons into slavery to pay off a debt. He asks her, what do you have in your house? She said, I have a small jar of oil. So he tells her to go collect all the empty vessels she can find, not only within her own home, but within, from neighbors also. So she does that. And he has her set them out, shut the doors, and then fill them from this one small jar of oil. And the oil does not run out until every vessel is full. She was able to sell the oil and thus pay off her debt and save her sons. Our needs equal the empty vessels. The only one who can fill us is God. He filled the widow's empty vessels and he meets our needs in every way. Charles Spurgeon also said that the story this story of Elisha in turn reflects Luke 6.38. Give and it shall be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing your near lap. For the measure you give is the measure you get back. In spite of the pandemic, our giving church is still here. Please be encouraged. Paul finishes his letter to the Philippians with greetings from those who are with him. And in verse 22, he mentions Caesar's household. Through research, I realized that this wasn't Caesar's family. It was everybody that was under Caesar that worked for him. His aides, the politicians, the soldiers, everyone, government workers, etc. Paul's final line is Philippians 4.23. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with your spirit. This is actually a repeat of verse one, I mean, chapter one, verse two. According to William Barclay, Paul does not say this just to fill space. To him, the Christian life begins and ends with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May our Christian life be filled likewise.
please bow your heads in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. May it open up our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to follow the direction that you have put, uh, given us. We ask that you bless these words to, uh, to our knowledge, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so now's the hymn for the beauty of the earth, right? the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For of the day and of the night hill and bell and tree and flower sun and moon and stars of light lord of all to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise for the and mild Lord of all to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise for each perfect gift of thine to the world so freely given graces human and divine flowers of earth and buds of heaven Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For thy church that evermore lifteth holy hands above, offering love on every shore, her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> See, it was a good one. <laughs> Would you please rise and say with me, oh, you're still standing, sir, never mind. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, and maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and sitteth in heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This is a time when we do uh, prayer requests, prayers of the people. So does anyone have a prayer request? Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Jen. I don't know if you can pray this by Donna Shelley's Yeah? Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Shelley, Jen's daughter, 
is stabilizing and doing better, going back to her being her old self. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, indeed. And Happy birthday. Oh, yeah, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, yes, I'm sorry. Christine, it's all I can do to, to rem I can't remember anybody's names because as soon as I get up here, the brain goes completely blank. So Christine started her job and is doing well. And yesterday was Crystal's birthday. Right, yesterday? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Adel. Oh dear. What's your aunt's name? Okay. The facility that Adel's Aunt Marge is in is has COVID. Okay. And prayers for protection and healing for everyone. Josh. Take take the mask off, please. Okay, Josh's great aunt Dina passed, correct? And prayers for the family. Anybody else? Is that it? You're just scratching your head, right? <laughs> All right, would you bow your head in prayer with me? <sighs> Lord, thank you that you know our hearts and our prayers even before we speak them. We come together before you and ask that you continue to keep your hand upon us and upon all those we love. We ask that you continue to direct the paths of the leaders of our country Guide them, O oh Lord. Help us to be united as a, as a nation and not divided to worship you as one people and that you will continue to lead us in the way we're supposed to go. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of Shelley and that she's stabilizing in her health and doing better and returning to herself. We prayed for continued healing for her, Lord God, and peace in her family. We also thank you, God, that Christine started her new job. We pray that it will be a blessing to her, that she will grow as she learns and um, fits into this office situation. We just pray for a blessing for her. Thank you also that Crystal enjoyed another birthday. Hallelujah. We hold up Adel's Aunt Marge, who is in assisted living facility. We pray that um, you protect her from the COVID that's in affected this facility, we pray for all the residents and the staff there, Lord, for healing and protection. We also thank you, God, uh, for Josh's great aunt, Dina, and we and just pray for the comfort of her family that she's passed, that you will continue to put your hand upon them, that they will find comfort and peace with each other, and that this will be a time of healing. We thank you, God, for continuing to watch over us. We thank you that you have blessed us with families and friends, that, that people we can speak with and open our hearts to. And we thank you, God, that you are never far from us, that your hand is upon us, Lord. We pray that you will continue to guide us and lead us in the way we're supposed to go. And that your peace will be with us, Lord, that peace which passes all understanding. 
We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, the Lord's Prayer. Would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, now is the time for the offering, and it's up on the screen. And the doxology. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. While you're standing, please join me in the prayer of dedication. Together as a congregation, what we offer you here in love becomes more. Not simply added together, but somehow multiplied in its usefulness. We ask you to bless our gifts, and of your blessing, there is enough for all. Name. Amen. Closing him is amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieve. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to within the veil a life of joy and peace when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to see Praise than when we first begin.
begun. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Have a great week. What? Oh, gee. I didn't write that down, so I forgot. Our verse for 2021. 1 Peter 5, 7. Oh, this is appropriate. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Yes, amen. <laughs> Oh, you know, I thank goodness for this church and this sense of humor. Yes. Amen. <laughs>